Hi, it's me, and today I'm looking at another of Sam Yang's new lenses that they're marketing this summer, the AF 45mm f1.8 FE, a little autofocus lens for Sony's E-mount mirrorless cameras, full frame or APS-C. I'm testing out an early copy of this lens, so I don't know what its price will be yet. I'd like to thank Sam Yang for sending me a copy of this lens for testing, but as usual, this is an independent review. We'll be taking a look at both its strengths and its weaknesses. On a full frame camera, that focal length of 45mm is very nice, just a little wider than a popular 50mm. 45mm gives a perspective to your images a little closer to that of the human eye, a little bit wide, but still giving you a decent emphasis on your subject. Personally, I prefer shooting a little wider than 50mm, so this is good to me. And of course, f1.8 is quite a nice maximum aperture for a lower budget lens for shooting in darker situations and getting more out of focus backgrounds. As you can see, the lens itself is designed to be fairly small, a lens that can live on your camera, and the build quality is actually quite nice. Its body feels metallic and nicely made, but only weighs 160 grams. It's a bit smaller than Sony's 50mm f1.8 FE option, and the build quality really is far, far better than Sony's plastic offering. It's based on a metal lens mount without a weather sealing gasket. The only control on the lens is the manual focus ring, which turns quite smoothly, working electronically by wire. The lens's autofocus system is nice and accurate. It works with eye autofocus on your Sony camera, and it's essentially completely silent in operation, but it only works at an average speed. This lens does not have image stabilization, but if your camera has in-body image stabilization, then it will be compatible with that. The lens's filter thread size is a small 49mm, and it comes with a rather diminutive but nice quality hood. Overall, the build quality is really nice, no problems here at all. Alright, image quality. Firstly, I'll be testing it on my full frame camera, a Sony a7R II with its challenging 42 megapixel sensor. In the middle of the image, at f1.8, we see good sharpness, although it's not bitingly sharp here. Over in the corners, at f1.8, we see softness, but not much chromatic aberration. Stop down to f2.8 though, for a big improvement there, with quite respectable sharpness now, and back in the middle, fantastic resolution and contrast. At f4, image quality is just as good from the middle and into the corners, but f5.6 sees a further improvement. It stays this sharp down to f11. Stop down to f16, and the effects of diffraction cause a slight softening. f22, more so. So overall, with this lens, at f1.8 we see rather average image sharpness on a 42 megapixel full frame camera, but stop down to f2.8 for pretty impressive sharpness. Its performance should be much more impressive on a 24 megapixel full frame camera though. Alright, well a compact 45mm f1.8 lens is a desirable option on APS-C cameras too, so let's try it out on my Sony A5100 with its 24 megapixel APS-C sensor. At f1.8, in the middle of the image, sharpness is just ok. The corners, again, are soft. At f2.8, there's an improvement, but things are still a little tricky there. Image quality in the middle is lovely and sharp. At f4, it's just as good there, but there's another nice improvement in the corners, and over there, at f5.6, the image quality is lovely and sharp. It's taser sharp down to f11, where diffraction is beginning to kick in. Overall, if you're shooting on an APS-C camera, there are better 50mm options out there. Ok, let's look at distortion and vignetting on a full frame camera. The lens projects very little distortion, which is good to see. At f1.8 there's a lot of vignetting, the corners look very dark. However, stop down to f2.8 and they brighten up again plenty. This lens can focus down to about 45cm, just average for a standard lens. At f1.8, close up image quality is a little soft, but much sharper at f2.8, and at f4, very sharp. 
Now let's take a look at how the lens works against bright light. It's not a bad performance here, we see some glaring, but not much in the way of flaring artifacts. And finally, bokeh. It's pretty good news here, this lens's out of focus backgrounds look quite nice and soft, but occasionally you can see a little outlining here and there. Overall, the Samyang 45mm f1.8 is a nice, small lens with nice build quality, and I like the 45mm focal length. Its image quality is generally just average, but neither is there anything wrong with it, it can easily get very nice pictures, so it's still recommendable.